and welcome back to a very unexpected episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. And we've had a death here, which is what you're looking at right now. Yes, my TV that served me for over 10 years has finally bit the big one. Now, I have repaired this TV in the past. There was one time it was acting up and I replaced a couple of capacitors in the power supply and that brought it right back, but... Yeah, I don't really think it's worth fixing this time. Now, I think in one of my previous YouTube videos I said that if this TV ever goes wrong again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the internals out and I'm going to replace the LCD driver board with a better one, which will hopefully get rid of those overscan problems when I'm running Linux and other things like that. Well. I took this TV apart, piece by piece, found the model number of the LCD panel, and despite all the options on the internet, I could not find a panel driver that was compatible with this particular screen. So that's kind of not an option anymore. I mean, it's probably just a simple power supply issue, but I've got another idea. The old TV from downstairs. Now this is the TV we used to have in the living room, and this has also got problems now. The backlight doesn't work, but I think that'll be a simple thing to fix. And even if I cannot get that working, I might even try to Frankenstein the two TVs together and cobble together a working set. So I'm just having to use my touchscreen monitor for now until I can get my TV fixed. But it all works, including the touchscreen stuff. Um, let's just play a random video here. Okay, let's try that one. And this is on Linux, by the way. Hi guys. As you can see, that's Volkswagen is back. Speaking of Linux, look at this. No overscan problem with this screen. So anyway, let's get back to our main attraction. So here it is on the bed. Face down. And I'm having to do this on the bed because this is far too big for the workbench. But if I get this TV working again, I think it's going to be a pretty nice TV to have. Got all the standard inputs here on the back. Three HDMIs. So I'll be able to plug my camcorder, my computer and my Wii U into this without having to remove and reinsert HDMIs. And this even has USB on it. Now, I'm not sure exactly what the USB is for. I think you can put... I think that might be able to play media off USB sticks, but I'm not entirely sure about that one. Anyway, I'm going to try and get this apart, and we'll take a look inside. Right, well, here we are inside the TV. I didn't know if this was going to be CCFL backlit or LED backlit, but... I think this is a pretty good indication that this is LED backlit and if it's just a simple power supply issue where it's not supplying power to the LEDs, well that's going to be a really easy thing to fix. I'm a little concerned about these voltages though because if you notice one of them says it gives out 280 volts. Now I don't know what could be using 280 volts but I'm guessing that is the LED panel but this wire seems to be awfully small for handling 280 volts, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm about to test to see whether there's anything coming out of the LCD power jack. So I've got my meter connected to the power jack. Hopefully the probes won't come out. I've had to make some kind of makeshift probe there. Just stick a couple of wires in. Hopefully they will make good contact and not come out. And as they say, the first rule of checking electronics is thou shalt check voltages, so that's what I'm going to do. Alright, so I'm going to plug this into the mains. I don't know if we'll get any response out of it initially, but... Well, the voltage on the meter seems to be ramping up slowly. If I press the power button... See if anything comes through. I was definitely doing something. So about 14 volts and then it... 
So I think we have a faulty power supply. I think that's all it is. So yeah, I think more than anything, this is a power supply problem because I try to turn it on. I've got the remote here. You can see it jumps up and then it goes right back down again. I'll try that again. So it jumps up to about 31 volts and then it just dies right down again. Let's try to get that to turn on again. And you see, it's trying. It is trying, but it's just not getting there. Okay, this is rather weird. If I take the negative and connect that to the chassis, we're getting the voltage there and it's holding a lot longer than it was before. Let's just try to turn this on again. Again, I'm going to use the remote control. Let's see if that changes at all. You see that? Went up to about, 200 and about 220 volts and then it just died off again. So it is definitely trying to put the light on, but it is just not succeeding at it. So I think the first thing to do is replace this capacitor here and see if that makes any difference, because it could just be something simple like a capacitor that's aged badly. I mean, it's not showing any signs of bulging anywhere, but that doesn't mean it hasn't gone bad. So I'll replace that. See if that brings the LED panel back to life, and if it doesn't, I'll try something else. Okay, well I've replaced that capacitor now. Couldn't find an exact replacement. The original was a 33 microfarad rated for 350 volt. The closest I have is a 22 microfarad. Well, here goes nothing. Oh, it did twitch like it did before. No, I don't think this is going to work. So, I think what I'm going to have to do is make my own backlight driver. Right, well, as they say, desperate times call for desperate measures. So what I've got here is an external power supply for the backlight that I've rigged up. So first we've got this choke here to limit the current. Then I've made an isolation transformer by putting these two transformers back to back. And on the end of this one, there is the rectifier and a capacitor. Yes, it's that capacitor that I assumed was bad. And this is going directly to the LCD backlights, which I have unplugged from the power supply board. Because I'm not sure if it's the power supply or the LCD board itself, because the thing is, if one of those LCDs has gone open and they're all connecting in series, that's more than likely going to make the power supply shut itself off because it thinks something's wrong. So if I plug this in, this is our backlight. I don't know if it's... I don't know what voltage we have. I'm not seeing any sign of the screen lighting up. I know I haven't plugged the TV in yet, but... I should really put my multimeter across there and see what voltage we're getting which I forgot to do, which is what I'm doing now. And I shall plug the TV in and see if we get anything that looks like a sign of life. I'm going to be careful here because this capacitor will now be charged. Of course, it would help if it was on volts, and I think... Oh, I hope I haven't fried my meter. It's still saying ohms, I don't know why. Okay, it's saying 3.6 volts. That doesn't seem right. Let's just plug that backlight supply in again. Let's see what we got. We got 142 volts. It might not be enough to even light the LEDs a tiny little bit. Let's plug the TV in. Well, actually, let's plug our LCD in first. And plug that in. Let's 
Merci. So there's any sign of life? I'm not seeing anything. Oh, actually, I did see something. I saw something right there. I don't know if you saw it. Of course, you wouldn't have seen it because the camera was not pointing at it. But I did see something very faintly on the screen. Let's see if we can get that to come up again. I'll get it to turn on. Is it turning on? I don't know. I can saw something appear right there, but uh Oh, actually, yeah, we can see something. There is something on the screen. I'm going to turn the lights off. No, I think maybe that was just a reflection of the light, but there is definitely a picture there. It's just that it's not lit up. But if I move my head just about right, I can actually make out a picture. Well, well there was a picture there just a minute, just a second ago, and as I started talking, it disappeared. But there, I did see text on this screen. All right, I've moved this to another tap on the transformer, so we should get a much higher voltage. So I'm going to plug that in. Okay, we've got 279 volts. So if that's not enough to make the backlight light up, so that doesn't make the backlight light up, then we'll know there's a problem with the backlight. Okay, 280 volts going into the backlight. Again, there's no light, but I can see I can see text on this screen. I can actually I can see that and I can actually read that. It says Video signal cable is not connected. Try another available input. Well, we know it's outputting a picture, so that's good. It just seems to be the backlight. So I reckon what the problem is, is one of the LEDs in the backlight has gone open, and that's why it's not working. So we've got to delve deeper into this TV and try to fix that backlight. Okay, well I made a bit more progress taking the TV apart. So this is the front of the TV with the bezel and the screen removed. I've got the bezel over here by the laptop and the screen right here. I've got to be very careful with this because it is glass, so I don't really want to break it. Make sure I didn't damage any of the connections. I mean connectors, I tried to say connectors and connections at the same time. So, all we're left with on this side is the backlight, still got the circuitry on there, and the diffusers. And over here on the chair, there's all the other bits I had to take out in order to get this thing apart. Okay, well I thought I'd do an experiment looking through one of these diffuser sheets just to see how everything looks. Gotta tell ya, looks pretty freaky through this thing. I don't know how I look through this, but... Actually, it's a little bit difficult to make out what's going on. You can see some vague shapes, but everything's all blurry and uh, just pretty much a mess of colours. I don't know how this looks the other way around. Or if it looks any different the other... Oh, wow. Holy cow, it does look different the other way around. It's like stone vision. Never actually been stoned. But I imagine it looks something like this. If I look down, everything is... Well, it looks as if I'm looking straight ahead, but everything is distorted and rainbow-coloured. If I look straight ahead, there's this sort of dark band, sort of right at eye level. If I look up, it's as if I'm looking straight ahead again, but again, it's all distorted and rainbow-coloured. In fact, if I... If I flex this... It's even more distorted. It kind of almost looks like it's underwater. So it's like it's splitting the image into two. So I've got one above me and one below me. And check this out. I've got this. Um, I'm holding this up against some of those schematics I've drawn on the wall. If I pull this away from the wall, 
Check this out. Everything separates into two. See that? Um, this is as a flush up to the wall as I can get it, and as I pull it away, you can see the images separate. Well, I'm trying to give you a look through this through the camera, but it's not really working too good. It isn't this blurry um, in real life, but the camera just seems to have a real trouble seeing it. See, there's the room again. This is with the camera looking down. There's the dark band, and the camera further up, you see the room again, so it's like it splits the image into two. And we've got one up here, and one down there. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure how these diffusers work, but my guess would be that they're covered in thousands, maybe millions of little tiny prisms, and they split up the light and do all the freaky things with it. Because if I run my finger along this, Try not to scratch it, but... Maybe able to hear that? Sounds as if it has grooves in it. So that's what I think. Well, this video is getting kind of long now, so in the next video, I'm going to be repairing the backlight. Then if that all goes well, I'll put the TV back together and we'll see if it works.